You have reached your destination. Hi. Now, I'm not sure I've reached my destination. When I was given this postcode, I was also told that it's depending upon the GPS I used, it might take me to the wrong place, a neighbouring farm, and not the farm I'm looking for. So, last night I went on the computer and I worked out the what three word address for the farm that I want. And now we're going to swap over to that on the mobile and double check I'm in the right place. So I've already put the address in the mobile and yeah it's already coming up yeah i'm in the right place i like what three words i use that a lot now i haven't found a way though of putting it into the tom tom gps i want to be able to use what three words on that is that possible i haven't worked out how to do it yet so I'm a few minutes uh, early, I'm close to Market Harbour in Leicestershire and I've come to a, a farm or an estate, it's a 600 acre farm where they've got some hides on various subjects. Uh, wildlife photographer Des Ong organises the photography shoots there and today I've come to do the buzzards. And I'm amazed how many of these sites there are now. In Spain, I, they're totally overrun with opportunities to photograph birds in various hides. I can't keep track of it in Spain, and it's becoming a bit like that in the UK. I googled it just about a month ago, and I found an endless stream of opportunities to photograph birds now from commercial hides. And I think a lot of it is landowners, farmers, estate managers, needing to diversify. So they tie up with a wildlife photographer and start to rent out hides because it's another way of making money. And farmers are always telling us they can't make money from growing food anymore. So I've come to check this one out and see what it's like. I think I'll go in now. And yes, I'm at the right place, Marston Lodge. And within a few minutes of arriving, I'm out of my car and into a four-wheel drive where we have Desong, the photographer, on the left-hand side, and Chris, the estate manager. That might be his job title. And they're taking me to a small wooded valley where we're going to have a go at photographing buzzards. Delight. No, we're like farmers. We've never got the right weather. <laughs> It's a very well-built hide. It will take four photographers. You're sitting in office chairs with roller caster feet. And Des has got the important job here. That one-way glass needs to be cleaned, both on the inside and the outside. There are excellent advantages to shooting through this one-way glass. It soundproofs the hide, you've got to be very clumsy to be able to disturb the bird, and you've got great vision. You can look all around and see what's going on. There is a port -a in a separate compartment of the hide. What's very noticeable is the glass is slanting. It's not vertical. And the great advantage of that, I would imagine, is the bird is less likely to see its reflection in the mirror that you, you can see from outside. That's a good idea, and I haven't really noticed that in other hides before. Now this one-way glass can vary. I've been in some in Europe where the quality is very poor, but Des tells me the quality of this hide is, is, is excellent. Once the glass is clean, Des and Chris disappear and leave you to the waiting game. What's unusual about this hide for buzzards is we didn't have to get in under the cover of darkness. This bird's been coming in for a long time here. So we got in at 11 o'clock and Des is going to come back to me with the estate manager Chris at 2 o'clock. So quite a short session for buzzards. I'm used to having to wait much longer for them. Fortunately, I've always enjoyed sitting in hides. I find it very relaxing. If there's no birds showing up, it's okay. I'm still enjoying sitting here. 
and I can I can watch things. I can see other other things that's going on. The buzzard, the buzzard has come in, and I'm filming it. I've got two cameras running on two separate tripods, but unfortunately, this is about the only time the sun has been shining. It's too bright. And when I say too bright, I really mean it's too contrasty. But as I'm watching this bird, he's very alert. If I was taking stills pictures with a digital SLR, i.e. a noisy camera, I would stop at this point. But the video's not making any noise, so I'd just leave it running. But this bird is looking very alert. I don't think he's going to stay. The bird has been in. It was there for about 10 minutes. Unfortunately, the sun was rather strong at the time. It's much better if it's overcast. The bird's come back in again and it's much more overcast, much nicer lighting. There's nothing you can do about it. When you've got the wrong light, it's the wrong light, you're stuck. This is much nicer lighting. It's overcast, really helps the picture a lot. Why the bird was looking so alert when he first came in, I don't know, but he wasn't relaxed. I don't think it's anything to do with me or the hide. With that one-way glass, you've got a lot of sound insulation. It can't see any movement. There was something else going on in the woods somewhere. But once he comes in and he settles down, he's there for a long time. You get plenty of pictures. Here's a few stills that I took in the very contrasty light at the beginning. Too many highlights, too many shadows. And then much nicer, softer light. All of the stills pictures are taken with the OM-1 camera on the 150 to 400 mm lens and the shutter speed was around 640th of a second with the lens wide open at 4.5, 1600 ISO. You do lose a little bit of light when you're shooting through this one-way glass, probably about one stop. But optically the glass was perfect and no colour cast either. The video footage is taken on a mixture, sometimes I'm using the OM-1, but more often I swap to the Lumix GH6, so I have to put that onto the same lens. I really enjoy doing slow motion video, but when you've got a bird that's calling, and this buzzard was calling frequently, you can't shoot slow motion, because the sound slows down as well. So apart from the final clip, everything's at normal speed here. Just before the end of the session it started to rain. That's not a problem, I like birds in the rain. The heavier the rain the better, you really want it bouncing off the backs. But at least it means the light is nice and soft and gentle. So this is the slow motion clip right at the end, rain coming down and the bird about to leave for the last time. 30 minutes later, Des turns up in his own vehicle to take me back again, and in next week's YouTube film, we'll look at their hide for kestrels and barn owls. Thanks for watching.